Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us dive into the Word. In today's Gospel, Jesus is instructing His disciples about the importance of the work of the Spirit in their lives. He says to them that they, did, they do not need to be anxious about defending themselves in the coming persecution because the Holy Spirit will teach them what they need to say. In this teaching, Jesus also mentions a sin that is unforgivable. It says, And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. So why is this sin unforgivable? Didn't Jesus give his life so that our sins may be forgiven? Yes, while that is true, how can blasphemy against the Holy Spirit be unforgivable? And how do we know if we have committed this sin or not? And so brothers and sisters, this blasphemy is not a one-time act of sin, you know, like gossiping, telling lies, or even stealing. To commit this unforgivable sin, it's not a one-time act, but rather better understood as a process of blasphemy. A process that is so subtle that sometimes even we ourselves don't realize it. And it starts off with us just thinking that we can love both God and the world. Yes, we may have decided to accept Jesus as our Lord, but we do not actually let Him be the Lord over our lives and our decisions. So brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit may be convicting us of our sin and calls us to repentance. But sometimes it is we ourselves that, you know, we cannot stop loving the world and sin. And as we keep resenting the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit becomes fainter and more distant in our lives and our conscience ends up becoming hardened. And when that happens, we end up losing the ability to discern good and evil because we become so blinded by ourselves and our sins and sometimes even until a final breath. And you know, we can go to church and read the Bible as much as we want and sometimes we do it so much that the words no longer mean anything to us. Because even in the Bible, you know, the scribes, they had come to a place where they were so familiar with religious things that when the Son of God showed up in front of them, they didn't know who he was and they accused him of being sent by the evil one. So dear friends, it is not that Jesus does not forgive our sins, but if we don't believe that Jesus will and can forgive us, how are we to reach that point of repentance? And how do we allow the Holy Spirit to bring us back to the right path? And that is something the world actually wants us to believe. You know, they resent the faith because it just pacifies or justifies their wrongdoings or their morals. And when we strive to be virtuous in this world, we end up getting ridiculed or resented or even persecuted. And so it always becomes the easier option to just conform to what the world demands of us rather than live by the higher standards that the faith requires of us. But dear brothers and sisters, if that is a question that you are asking today, if you are asking yourselves or if we are asking ourselves today, if we have committed this unforgivable sin, then that actually means that the Holy Spirit has stirred something in our hearts and has given us the desire for repentance and change. And so my brothers and sisters, I pray today that we will continue to be attentive to the work of the Spirit in our lives and allow God to work in us and through us to build His kingdom here on earth. Have a blessed weekend, my dear brothers and sisters, and God bless.